Hi, everyone, and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. This is my second ancillary video, and that means it's going to be a little more chatty and personal. Plus, I want to tell you about a home meal subscription service that I've been using, and I have some books that I want to review for you today. So if you're interested in all that, stick with me. So did you watch the Royal Wedding last week? It wasn't something that I planned to watch, but I was up early and looking on YouTube for any new videos to watch, and I saw that the wedding was being streamed live, so I thought, why not? And it was actually really nice to watch it on YouTube because you didn't have to listen to all the chatter and analysis of the network people, and you didn't have to watch any commercials. It's always kind of fun to watch those formal events where the ladies wear beautiful hats and, and the fascinators, the smaller headpieces with feathers, beads, and flowers. Did you know that a fascinator was originally a, he a knit head covering? So yeah, there is your fiber arts connection to the royal wedding. And this occasion was probably more enjoyable to the guests than something like the Academy Awards because no one had to talk about their outfits to television reporters. Speaking of outfits, I thought the wedding gown was beautifully simple and I love the boat neck. That's my favorite neckline. So I enjoyed watching it. Well, my first couple of weeks of summer break have been good. The weather has been pretty nice, but we have a lot of bugs this year, just gnats and mosquitoes. So it's hard to sit outside. You just get attacked and bitten by all these bugs. My main focus lately though has been a horribly painful knee, which has gotten worse over the past month. Um, it just started out being stiff a couple months ago and then it's gotten to the point where I could hardly walk. Well, I went to my doctor and he had me get an ultrasound on it and then go to an orthopedist for a consultation. And he thinks I have a torn meniscus or something like that, which is the cartilage that cushions your knee where the thigh and the shin bones meet. So it's like a, a shock absorber. Well, I don't know how I injured it. But anyway, so now I, I'm, I'm going to physical therapy and that has helped a lot. I am actually walking now without crutches and I'm able to walk around the block. So I've been doing that a few times a day. Other than that, I thought I would share with you a home meal delivery service that my husband and I have been trying out for the past couple of weeks. This is a food subscription service like HelloFresh and Blue Apron or popular ones I've heard of. Uh, this is where they plan out a menu for you and send you all the fresh ingredients along with the recipes and you cook the meals yourself. Now, I've been reluctant to try this out because cooking is not one of my favorite things to do. I actually hate cooking. <laughs> I've always said that if I won the lottery, the first thing I would do is hire a cook. And worse than cooking is meal planning. Does anyone else feel this way? When I go to the grocery store, I am so uninspired. Even when I make a grocery list, it's always the same old thing. And you get into this food rut and it's boring and it makes you want to cook even less. So anyway, I a few weeks ago, I was reading an online review of several of these home meal delivery services, which intrigued me and motivated me to look into it more. And, and I'll, actually, I'll link that review down in the information box below because one of her highest recommended services is called Home Chef. And she recommended it because, well, this is what she said. There are a lot of meals to choose from. The recipes are delicious. And they have a lot of family-friendly meals, meaning that you know everyone in the family would enjoy them. They also have vegetarian meals. And I think they have meals for people on special diets who you know, don't want to avoid, or who want to avoid soy, dairy, shellfish, stuff like that. I think the default is three meals per week of two servings each, but there's a lot of flexibility. You can get more servings. You can look at the menu for a given week in advance and swap out any of the meals with something else from their list. They have like 12 other options you can select instead of the default menu. And everything has pictures so you know what it looks like along with the descriptions. And I love it because it has all the nutrition information too, including calories, protein, sodium, and all that. 
and you can choose your delivery day and all the meals are sent in an insulated box via FedEx overnight delivery. So our box gets sent on Mondays and we get it delivered on Tuesdays. And when you open the box, you'll notice that it's entirely insulated with plastic wrapped in cotton batting. And I love this because all the packaging is recyclable. Inside the box, all of the meats are packaged in a separate bag and then all the produce is packaged individually for each recipe. For each meal, you get an eight and a half by 11 recipe card that has a picture of the finished dish on one side and step-by-step -step cooking instructions on the other side. So when you go to cook, you just grab the meat for that meal and grab the bag with all the other ingredients for that meal and then follow the directions on the recipe card. Oh, and they send you a three ring binder for organizing your recipe cards too. Now I have to say that I've really enjoyed cooking these meals. They take about 30 to 45 minutes to prepare, including chopping or cutting up ingredients as well as roasting or cooking them. Um, you get just enough of each item to make the recipe so there's no waste. You're not buying a whole onion and then needing only a teaspoon of it. Some things are already chopped up and some you have to do yourself. Now the only ingredients I've needed to have on hand are olive oil, salt and pepper, and nonstick cooking spray. Everything else comes with the meal. And all the dishes we've had tasted really good. And they were unique recipes that were so flavorful, including some ingredients that we never would have tried otherwise. So I've been really happy with it. I would say probably the only drawback is the cost. It's about $20 per meal for dinners. So if you order three meals per week, it's $60 or four, four meals per week is $80. Shipping is included in the price and they always seem to have coupon codes that you can use to get a discount. Um, in fact, I'll use, I'll include a link below that will give you $30 off or you can just do a Google search for Home Chef and you'll see the coupon link come up. Anyway, as I said, um, we've been doing it for a couple weeks now and have been very happy with it. So for now, we're planning on continuing our subscription. Let me know down below in the comment section if you tried one of these home meal subscription services and which one and how you liked it. Is it something that you're interested in? Do you hate to cook as much as I do? <laughs> Okay, let's switch gears now and talk about some books. So for the past seven years, I have been keeping this little book journal, which is really just a list of all the books I've read and the dates that I finished them. It's kind of fun to go back and look at the books that you've read. I kind of wish I would have started doing that sooner, but oh well. So what I thought about doing for today is talk about three audiobooks that I've listened to because y'all know that I really um, enjoy listening to audiobooks from Audible. And I picked out one that I rated three stars, one that I rated four stars, and one that I rated five stars. Now I did enjoy all three of these books and they all had excellent readers so my ratings for the books were not negatively influenced because the reader was bad or anything like that. So here we go. The first book, which is my three star book, is called The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is a short novel about a middle aged man who returns to his boyhood home to attend a funeral. And while he's there, he explores his old rural neighborhood and finds that his childhood home has been replaced with sprawling housing developments. He soon finds himself at a pond at the end of a country lane, awash in memories of being seven years old. In sorting out these memories, he goes back in time to a year when he was befriended by a strange and mysterious little girl named Letty, Letty Hemstock, who is 11 years old and has been for a very long time. Letty is more than an old soul. She is a magical defender, which is good because the boy is soon in need of that. Now, I was not expecting the clash of supernatural forces that drive this story, but what was I thinking 
This is Neil Gaiman, the fantastic myth maker who wrote American Gods, Coraline, and the Sandman series, all of which I've read and enjoyed very much. Somehow I forgot that his books are full of fable, folklore, and fantasy, but there it was in my face, complete with a menacing nanny, eerie neighbors, and monsters who wickedly impersonate loved ones. Something has unleashed a malevolent force in the neighborhood, and it soon comes to reside in the boy's home in the form of a nanny named Ursula. She is evil personified, and he has every reason to fear her. The boy's new friend Letty, her mother, and her grandmother fiercely set out to protect him. Their centuries worth of accumulated wisdom proves invaluable in our hero's battles with Ursula. She threatens to lock him in the attic and generally casts a negative influence over the household, even turning the boy's parents against him. He's powerless against her because she's an adult. And as the book reminds us, when adults fight children, adults always win. And this evil nanny can call on more malevolent resources than even the average adult can. And there is more to her than meets the eye. She is really a parasitical alien creature from another dimension. Okay, so where this book truly succeeds is in its honest examination of youth. Probably Neil Gaiman's greatest strength is his uncanny ability to remind the reader what it felt like to be a child and the very real scariness of being such a tiny soul in a world so vast that you can't comprehend it. Yet ultimately being big doesn't give you all the answers and many times you're still just as scared. Now, I do recommend The Ocean at the End of the Lane to any fans of Neil Gaiman's work and to anyone who's ever gone back to the home they loved most as a child and remembered how it used to be. This would be a good book if you're reading for something spooky to read in October. It's not completely terrifying, but it is a haunting tale. As far as my overall opinion of the book, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. Um, I did really like that the reader for the audiobook was Neil Gaiman himself, and he did a great job, so I did give him five stars. Uh, but again, that is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Today's four-star review is for an audiobook that I really enjoyed, and that is The Life We Bury by Alan Eskins. The main character in this book is Joe Talbert a college student who gets an interesting assignment in his English class to write the biography of a stranger. In order to do his assignment, he decides to visit a nursing home and see if he can interview one of the residents. And he ends up talking to a man named Carl Iverson, who has quite a story. Now, Carl is a Vietnam veteran who was found guilty of raping and murdering a young girl and he spent 30 years in prison for this crime. He's been released to a nursing home because he's dying of cancer and only has a few weeks left to live. So Carl tells his story to Joe. And as Joe learns about Carl's heroism in Vietnam, he finds it hard to believe that this is the same man who brutally raped and murdered someone. He, he becomes pretty sure that there's more to the story. Joe decides to investigate and find out the truth of what happened. And his research into the old case gains momentum fairly quickly as he's helped by Lila, his attractive neighbor who, on whom he's had a crush for quite a while. With Carl's permission, Joe and Lila obtain some of the evidence from the court trial, including the young victim's diary and some crime scene photographs. When Joe spots a detail in one of the photographs that was overlooked at the trial, he starts to wonder who the real killer might be and why Carl never proclaimed his innocence. As Joe's search for clues becomes more dangerous, Carl grows weaker and time starts running out. Joe 
realizes that Carl wants his name cleared before he dies. Over the course of the novel, it becomes evident that Joe isn't searching for the truth for a grade in his English class or even for Carl. But rather, Joe feels that in finding the truth, he will also somehow find himself. I really adored this book. I thought it was a good emotional page turner. The fact that the main character was just an average person, not a trained private investigator or police officer, was a real strength. I was intrigued with Carl's story from the moment he was introduced, and I loved the complex twists and turns of the mystery aspect of the novel. Joe is a great character. He's a survivor and desperately tries to make the most of his life circumstances. His mother is mentally ill and alcoholic. He has an 18-year-old autistic brother. This book sucked me in from the start because the author added this, this family drama and legal thriller to the mystery. The war stories told by Carl are horrifying, and there's a twist that readers may see coming, but that's okay because this book is as much a character study and coming of age study as it is a mystery. The author, Alan Eskins, is a practicing attorney and he gracefully balances suspense with a very humane story of courage and justice gone wrong. If you're looking for a book that will captivate and move you, this one will not disappoint. Now, I gave this book four stars only because the ending just wraps things up a little too neatly and optimistically. But overall, I still loved it, and I think it would be great for a book club discussion. The audiobook reader, Zach Villa, was good. Not the best voice actor, but I'm still giving him four stars as well. So I do recommend this book. Again, that is The Life We Bury by Alan Eskins. All right, today's five-star review is for the book entitled The Lotus Eaters by Tatiana Soli. This is such a good book. The audiobook was released in 2010, so it's been out for a while. The story is set in Vietnam during the war in the 1960s and 70s. The reader views the war through the eyes of Helen, an American photojournalist who is following in the footsteps of her brother, a soldier who was killed in the war. Helen wants to know how he died. And along the way, she finds herself captivated by the beauty of the country amidst the chaos, destruction, and horror which surround her. Her ambition brings her to the attention of Sam, a legendary American combat photographer, and his unassuming assistant and invaluable companion, Lynn. Lin is a Vietnamese man who has lost everything and who's doing what he can to survive. Through Lin, the reader gets a more intimate look at the war from a Vietnamese perspective. Helen, Sam, and Lin all end up working together covering the war. Now, I have to say this is not the kind of book I usually read. Um, reading a novel about the Vietnam War doesn't seem like a very enjoyable activity, especially when you think about the previous accounts of the, the war, like Apocalypse Now, The Deer Hunter, Hamburger Hill. And yet, I fell in love with this novel from the very first word and was immediately drawn to this, into the story. It is a fictionalized yet well-researched account of the war from both sides. It is, it's a love story interwoven with the chaos of war, but I wouldn't call it a romance novel. It's a story about falling in love with the country that yours is currently fighting, and a story about the impact war can have on people. So the novel opens with Helen fleeing the wreckage of Saigon with Lynn, who is severely wounded. The U.S. Embassy is being hastily evacuated as the communists take over, uh, which is the final sign of the war lo being lost. And soon Helen's thoughts and the novel 
shift to the past, and the reader is taken to the moment she first arrived in Saigon. From there, her story, Sam's story, and Lynn's story unfold. When I was immersed in this book, it was one of those compulsions that I couldn't wait to listen to it every day. It's been a while since I looked forward to listening to an audiobook as much as I anticipated listening to this one. I absolutely felt like I was there in this breathtaking, lush country and living amidst the Vietnamese people. This book would certainly make a fascinating book discussion group pick. It has stayed with me since I listened to it a few years ago. I have to say it is one of the best books I've read on par with The Invention of Wings and The Book Thief. I highly recommend it. And the reader, Kirsten Potter was amazing, and I gave her five stars as well. And that, again, is The Lotus Eaters by Tatiana Soli. If you haven't read it, you might want to go get it right now. So that wraps up my three, four, and five star book reviews for this week. Um, let me know if you'd like to see more book reviews in this format. Have you read any of these books? Do you have any three, four, or five star book reviews to share with us. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So leave your comments in the comment section below. And I will leave links to everything I talked about today in the information box right below this video. Just click on show more to open up the box and you'll see all the links there. Now, one thing before I go, I wanna tell you that I'm gonna be taking a few weeks off from making videos. I have to finish getting my summer class ready, which starts in a couple weeks. I have to work on getting my knee better and I'm going out of town. So I'm gonna shoot for something around mid to late June to resume my video schedule. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you next time. I hope your summer's off to a good start and remember to stay smart and have a sparkly week or a few weeks. Bye everybody.